Hey friends, criminal defense attorney Ryan Pasiga, and today I am coming with you at you with some really happy news on the one hand, but also some really sad news. I opened a headline today. I'm a member of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and part of what we all help each other do is stay on top of what's going on across the nation and crime and policies and the law and all those sorts of things. Today I got the news that a man in Philadelphia was freed from prison after doing 27 years for a murder he never committed. Let that sink in for a minute. 27 years. 27 years, you might, you might miss all of your children growing up. You've missed time in a marriage. Some people's parents or grandparents die while they're sitting in prison or jail. Uh, doing a sentence for a crime they did commit, or even worse, for a crime they never committed. And this guy's never going to get his 27 years back, no matter how much money they may eventually sue the state of Pennsylvania for, I don't know. But here's what went down on this case from what I've been able to gather. This guy went to trial. This was not a plea agreement. He went to trial and maintained his innocence. And despite the lack of physical evidence presumably a jury of 12 people, found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Get this. Later on, many years later, the Pennsylvania Innocence Project took his case, and they convinced the prosecutors to look at it again. And from what I can gather, there was a gun that was swabbed at the scene and fingernails under the victim. They got DNA under the, fi their fi the fingernails, and they got some DNA from the gun at the scene, is from what I can understand here. And this DNA showed that he was never there, that it was somebody else that has still been out there unless they've died by now, getting away with a murder. So the jury, presumably, or if it was a bench trial, the judge, applying the presumption of innocence and the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt apparently didn't care enough that there was no DNA here connecting him to it. Or somebody didn't care enough to test this DNA at the time. And if you argue that the DNA technology wasn't there 27 years ago, well, it was certainly there 15 years ago or so. And what happened to all that time? that this guy's been sitting there. But there's more, unfortunately. Second, re witnesses had recanted their statements and had even indicated that law enforcement in that case had threatened them that they better implicate this guy. And that happened there. In addition to that, there were police notes taken during the investigation that were never disclosed to the defense. That's called a Brady violation, if prosecution knows about that. And whether law enforcement knew about it and didn't give it to the prosecution, or whether prosecution had it and didn't disclose it to the defense, which unfortunately still happens to this day in some cases, that was a grave miscarriage of due process. An offense, the ultimate sort of offense, that one can do is to not turn over materials during a law enforcement investigation to the defense lawyers or to the defendant. So all of those things happen and finally they noted that the particular detective had a reputation of obtaining false confessions in some other files. I don't know if he got a false confession in this case or not, but regardless of that, not turning over police notes, not testing, for DNA and hanging on to this for that long, even after the DNA technology came back, 27 years. Now what I want to get you back to is this. You know, in the beginning of trials, jurors are questioned about their ability to follow the rules if they're selected as a jury, and that means actually presuming the defendant innocent and actually holding the government or the prosecution to its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt, right? I cannot understand if a jury was really presuming this guy innocent, how they'd convict him, given these things. And I can't understand 
how a jury or a judge re having the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt and holding the government or the prosecution to that would be able to convict someone. But it happens, and he's not the only one. And that's why it's so important for jurors to truly presume a defendant innocent. Not just say it, oh yeah, I'll presume him innocent, and then start the trial and not presume him innocent. The, the importance of the presumption of innocence and why the American justice system was built on that is because we value someone's freedom so much and a fair process so much, ideally, in our Constitution and the amendments in the Bill of Rights that we hold dearly the idea that we do not want someone being convicted of a crime, whether it's a misdemeanor or the greatest of felonies, for a crime that they did not commit. And if we're not sure if it happened or not, we err on the side of preventing against a wrongful conviction. That's how our justice system works, and for good reason. It is horrific to lock someone up for a crime that they never committed. It is horrific to brand someone a murderer or a thief or a drunk driver even for a crime that they didn't really commit. That's the importance of presuming someone innocent and breathing life into that in the courtroom if you're a juror. Because it's easy to say, I'll presume you innocent, and then the trial begins and not presume them innocent, start to believe the police or other witnesses. And when you don't know what really happened or not, that's why the presumption of innocence comes in. You're not to say, well, they got to prove to me that they didn't do it. That's not how this works. It might work that way in some third world countries where you're held in front of a cage in front of a judge and the courtroom's closed to the public and you've got no right to cross-examine your accusers or no right to a lawyer or no right to remain silent or no right to a jury of your peers. But here in America, as flawed as some things can be here, We've still got these rights, and they need to be breathed into life by jurors in the courtroom or they mean nothing. So if you're ever picked as a juror or you know someone that's going for jury duty, you may want to remind them of stories like this, that presuming someone innocent is crucially important so that they get a fair trial and holding the government to its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Right? That means that if you're not so sure if something happened or not, you presume that accused person innocent, just like you would want to be presumed innocent or you would want that presumption for your loved one or your friend. Because the presumption of innocence helps fight against wrongful convictions and locking people behind bars for what could be half their life, a third of their life certainly more than a quarter of your life in a situation like this, 27 years. I just have my doubts that a jury really presumed him innocent. And I have my doubts that the jury held their the government in this case to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. They probably fudged. They probably said, well, it's more likely than not. Maybe they didn't even care. Maybe they didn't like the guy. Whatever it was, this was a great miscarriage of justice his life his trauma forever if he had kids trauma forever there goes another dad without their children maybe he had a wife his parents probably died and never got to see him be released for the crime that he never committed so let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, this is really, really important. Uh, it's one of my biggest fears in a trial that, that maybe a jury won't presume the defendant innocent and maybe they won't hold the government to its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt because not proven equals not guilty. That's how it works here and for good reason. Otherwise, you end up with wrongful convictions like this. Today, my heart goes out to that guy and if you're watching this and you've got a loved one, who you think is in that situation that maybe is toiling away in jail or prison for a crime they never committed. My heart goes out to you. Uh, this does happen, and all we can do is try to prevent it the most we can.
Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like my channel, subscribe. I'm trying to be helpful to people out there, everyday people like me and you. God bless. Oh, you can find me. <laughs> my name's Ryan Pasiga. If you've got questions, you can find me at arrestedmn.com or you can call me at 612-339-5844. I'm a criminal defense lawyer and I believe in fighting for people's rights and protecting people that are accused of crimes.